Hi, Keith here with another video on PAST and this time I'm going to focus on options on the plot menu. Before I go there, very briefly looking at the data. This is data from a simulated environment where the seafloor slopes from about 25 meters deep to 75 meters deep and there are three oil platforms leaking oil which is getting incorporated in the bottom sediments and we're sampling the bottom sediments for environmental and biological variables and I've got three main designs one here where I've got impact and matched controls but not looking at the top platform so that's my CVI I've got a transect design where I'm just looking at two transects running north to south in areas which should be unpolluted and lastly situation where I've essentially taken a large number of samples randomly all over the place. Looking at one of the data sets I've got four environmental variables that I'm measuring for each sample and then I've got abundances of all of the taxa. Depending on the particular design I might have other variables in here indicating the location of the sample or its particular group. So over to PAST and the plot menu and there's a range of graphs included here and they're not bad for having a quick look at your data. So taking the ones that I tend to use and starting from the top we'll look at graph. Now in all of these you need to select the data that you're going to use usually by just selecting the columns or you could drag out to a smaller set if you wanted to focus in on just a smaller set of points. As always with past you can drag columns around to get them next to each other if you need to. So selecting just two of the species and graph it's just a simple line graph with the values oops, didn't want to go there yet. The values in order from first sample through to last sample. And you can change the way in which you display the results here. For these particular observations, we were just looking at the abundance of two species, a line plus a points is probably a good way to go. So this one just helps you get an idea of any patterns through the data um, in order of sampling. Um, all of these graphs can be copied and pasted into a Word document and you also have the options to save a picture. We'll look at that in a bit more detail in a moment. So that's a simple graph of a set of variables. One that's more useful, and I'm switching around different data files here, it will be a scatter plot. And if I have hydrocarbon or pollution levels along with count of species and go plot XY graph we can start to look at relationships between variables. Now in the original data sheet here I have colored the rows and given different symbols to the different groups so that we can distinguish them easily. And now let's start playing with a few of the options. Right click, I like symbols to be bigger and I like point symbols and thicker lines. You can fiddle around with fonts and other things if you want to. And this is fairly clearly showing us what's happening here. These are the control samples with very low levels of hydrocarbons and lots of species. And then there's hydrocarbon levels, whoops, did it again. Hydrocarbon levels increase, the number of species starts to drop off in a curvilinear type of fashion. What else can we do here? We can put on labels, which helps us identify the points, but can be a bit messy. Um, we can put ellipses around 95% of the points or draw convex holes which enclose all the points. Which of these you choose to put on uh, will depend on exactly what it is you try to look at. Right click again and here save picture gives me the option to save the file in one of these four common 
formats. So JPEG, BMP, GIF, PNG and TIFF are all standard um, pixel formats. EMH, uh, EMF is enhanced meta file and you can use that one and open the file in a drawing program, a vector graphics drawing program such as Illustrator um, to enhance the graph. Uh, I'm not going to bother with that here. Okay, so what else have we got on our plot menu? Um, this one I've had to draw up the data specially for and you note I've labeled the rows and also given them colors. Plot X, Y with error bars. This one is handy because it actually can be quite tricky finding a way to draw this particular graph. Again I'll make the symbols bigger and put on points and add the labels. So now you can see the points are labeled, they're in their different colors or symbols if I left that option and I could always go and save this and <clears throat> as an enhanced meta file if I wanted to further tidy it up in a graphics program. Well, that one is useful as it's a type of graph that is becoming more commonly used when looking at isotope ratios but it's actually kind of tricky to draw. On the list here is histogram and as it might suggest it does a histogram of values so I've just still got crustacean 5 and 7 selected here and it's drawing up graphs for both of those. Um, probably better to look at just one of them at a time if we're doing something like looking for normality. Select the default bins here, you can change this to be something that works better and I can put that on as a plot to see where the distribution more or less matches normality. There's another option for doing that that I'll look at a little bit later on. Try something else, hydrocarbons here. Put the normal on there, that's not looking too bad really. And that's what we might expect if we're looking at an undisturbed system. Now I'm going quickly because I'm trying to keep these videos to be fairly short at about 5 to 10 minutes. Okay, what else have we got here? Uh, we've got bar chart box plot. So again, let me select a species and bar chart box plot. So this is your pretty standard bar with um, an error bar. I can change to standard error, standard deviation, one sigma or 95% confidence interval and switch it over to a box plot. The jitter allows for slight variation among points like this. So the jitter is showing that and we can look at the actual values themselves and if they're overlapping I can do that to spread them out a little bit. Um, if I've got a couple of species plot, I get a column for each variable that I select. And again, I can go with box plot and get standard type of box plot. Now, what would be really useful in this situation where I've got sampling at different sites would be to look at some variables by site. And the only way to do that is to separate out the sites by columns. Now in the previous video I showed how you can do this with the edit menu and down to stacked colored rows into columns. So you can see I've got HC selected, I do this and that's what happens. Now I would need to relabel these because each one of these is now a site. But in doing this, I've obviously got rid of all the other data, so you would want to save this as a different file. But it does work well for getting standard bar chart or box plot. So now I've got hydrocarbons plotted for the two control sites on the outside, two impact sites in the middle, and if I want I can switch that to a box plot showing there's a lot of variation at this particular site 
and very little at the two control sites. Okay, now I can undo that because past has a good undo. Okay, over back to my transact and a normal probability plot. Normal probability plot puts out the points so that if the distribution, underlying distribution is normal, the points should fall more or less on a straight line. And this is in fact not too bad here, looking at hydrocarbons in an undisturbed area. What about if I look at a species? Uh, normal. Again, it's not too bad. It's not exactly normal because it's got a bit of taper at both ends, so a, a transformation such as the square root might fix that problem. Okay, two more plots to look at. And I'm going over to my map data for these. Um, the first one, first of these, is Bob Plot. And with all of these, you may have to fiddle with the options. So what I'm selecting here is the X coordinate where the sample was taken. So basically um, one location marker, the Y coordinate for the other location marker, so east, west, north, south. And the variable I'm plotting on here is concentration of nutrients. And it's actually increasing quite obviously as we go from the shallower to the deeper water or from north to south. Ideally, I should be able to flip these axes, but I can't do that. And the size over here controls, as you can see, the scale. The other thing I can do in here is hit Filled Regions, which will colour that in. Now, at, this is just looking at a map, so I'm not distinguishing the individual samples in any way. What about if I try the same thing? over here. This time hydrocarbons. Now all the samples in the north-south direction are quite close to each other but you can quite clearly see here the large difference in concentration of pollutants between the two impact sites in the middle and the control off to the side. And now if I go filled regions put in some thick lines, I get a nice coloured plot with different points and different colours for each of the different sites. Okay, last one, and I'm going back to map for this, and get rid of this one, um, and I'm going to take depth. Plot landmarks 3D, and this plots a nice three dimensional graph uh, with depth going vertically up and down, x and y are coordinates north, south, east, west. I can turn the walls on or off, I think they look better. Stems sometimes helps the display of the graph, and axes is pretty obvious. Now, one thing you'll note is that to get this graph, I actually put the Z or the variable that's going up and down in the middle uh, with other past conventions or conventions in this package you would expect to put it last but it's got to go in the middle to get the display coming up like that. Okay this one has gone on for a little longer than I hope but I'm trusting that you'll find something of use in here in this little video on how to draw graphs with PAST.